There is something else that it's, uh, gets kind of confusing because it seems like a flip to at first. And it's this. Cosine inverse of x. Cosine inverse. This negative 1 right here is an inverse symbol. Now, whoops, yeah, I spelled that right. Almost thought I didn't spell that right. Inverse. Now, if you're one, if even as one of my students, and I would be very proud if you actually looked at that and went, oh, flip cosine. Can you understand why? Because of negative exponents, right? So I've been training you with those negative exponents that it's one over, and almost all the time it's like a flipping motion, correct? It's not one over, and that's where I've really got to be careful here and kind of em emphasize this is different than a number with a negative one f a, 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 a negative one exponent. A number with a negative one exponent, flip it, perfect. Okay? But when a function uses the negative one exponent, and we did do some inverse functions this year, we switched the input and output. We switched x and y. Okay? And that's exactly what this is saying. The input of the cosine function, and I'm going to write an example of one of these. Okay, cosine theta equals, I'm going to put some numbers in, 1 over 3. So what this function is, this cosine uh, function part, this is saying, give me an angle, okay, whatever that angle is, whatever it was, because it's blank right here, it's going to kick out 1 over 3. So the input is the theta, the output is the two lengths in a ratio, 1 over 3, okay? Now, we're going to use the cosine inverse, which is if I take the lengths, could you kick back the angle? So it switches this input-output idea. This is absolutely necessary if I tell you to solve for the angle. Solve for theta here. Okay, well, solving is finding out what theta makes is true. So we could take out our calculators and start guessing a lot of angles. We could. Okay? We also could try to do algebra. The algebra that you're most familiar with is, well, I need to isolate theta. I need to undo the things on theta. A common thing to say is maybe I could divide by it, but it's a function that's a lookup on a table. It's not a multiplier. So one of the things that I like to remind students of is how did we deal with square root of x? Did we divide by a square root? Did we, you know, do an x track multiply to phi? We did an undoing, right? We squared. That's perfect. Squaring is the inverse function. The reverse function changes the input-output idea, right? Of at a square root of x. So if I square square root of x, that released the variable. In a sense, it canceled the actions upon it. Okay? Now, how can I release the cosine theta if I can't look at it as a division or something? I've got to undo it with an undoing function. What's the undoing function that I've been discussing? Cosine negative 1, which is cosine inverse. If I do it on that side of the equation, it will, in a sense, cancel out the actions and release theta. Okay? Now, in mathematics, fundamental rule of algebra is we do one thing to one side, whatever it is, we do it to the other side. Take out your calculator, you're going to need it to check this one. So we're going to do cosine inverse of uh, one third. Now, before you do it, you must check to see if your TI-83's mode, okay, your TI, look at the button mode, okay, and make sure it is in degrees. Make sure it's in degrees, okay? They, otherwise, it'll kick out another number, which we're going to discuss at a further lesson down the road. So if you kick it out, if you, excuse me, if you um, plug in one third, or cosine inverse one third, which is on the cosine button, Seven, what is it? 70.5 is I think correct. So this kicks out 70.5 degrees. So if I was to draw this triangle, in fact, that's a very good skill. Given the cosine one-third, cosine theta one-third, everybody should try to draw 
cosine theta one third. This is what I mean. Make a triangle, put theta at one of the acute angles that's here, and then put the one and three in its proper place. Okay, how do I know where it goes? Because it's cosine, and so I could sit here and go, ka, ka. So where's the one go? The one goes in the adjacent, so it depends on where you put theta. So how many people put theta in the top? One did. It's, it happens every time. Two did. I don't know why. Everybody did put theta at the bottom. We're very, we're very consistent that way as the human race goes. So if you put theta in the bottom, and I think most of you did, the one goes here and the three goes there. I'll use a different color in case you ended up putting theta at the top. If you put theta at the top, the one goes there, but the three is also still there. So that's also still three. Okay, so if this is why it's important to know where you are coming from is your adjacent which fills your ratio or opposites, etc. Jeremy, question? Uh, 